Hello, as you can probably gather, it's time to pack to go to Australia. And it's a little bit, looks like carny, doesn't it? So I did have some packing in a bag, but I've had to take it all out and start again because I don't know where I am. So I've just got everything out. Now, I'm very organised. I always have my packing list um, of everything that I need. And so I can just go for it, make sure it's in the bag. Because we're in a camper van, um, I don't want to take a hard kick because where the heck are we going to put it? Um, my brother, who's coming with me, um, keeps insisting on the hard case, and I'm like, no, 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 no. So I found some soft bags. But uh, this one is quite a good one. It's got wheels on it. And then I have this one, that I, uh, this one here that's got wheels on it, which uh, I think I've filled with clothes for when I go on my travels. Um, actually, I don't know what's in there at the moment. But then when I was emptying from under the beds, I found this one. Was, I don't know if it's a bit big. But I said to my brother, I'm going to bring them all round your house. And we're taking two soft bags between us. So he's worried because he has fish in one. So I said, in that one, we're going to pad it out with all the life, you know, like my life jacket and the, the noodle and noodle. I don't know what you call it. Um, this. Which is better because I'm always carrying it around in cases with me. Now I know I can buy this in Australia. But this is really good for the bag keeping a shape because it's a flat bag. So like put it in the middle bit, pad underneath, and you can put things in there. So I said to me, fishing ones are going in there. I'm not taking hard cases. And then, of course, this is my hand luggage bag. So, yeah, and I've got my rucksack for my cameras I always get that I can get those in it I have gone on holiday using this for hand luggage only it's a brilliant bag and what I also like about it is when you're on airplanes now they don't give you a rest they put your feet on do they and uh, I've only got short legs and if they're dangling for too long they really start to hurt so I actually stuff that bag and I put soft things on the top of it and I use it as a footrest I said, make sure it's not so packed it won't fit under my seat I just got to get under the seat so I can get my feet up in it. And uh, I swear by it. I do. I have to say, since I've been doing that and keeping my trainers on throughout flights, I haven't been suffering with those awful swollen ankles so much. Oh, the bane of our life when we're travelling at our age, isn't it? Anyhow, we're going to just start at the top of the list or what makes sense and make sure we've got everything. Um, worry about equipment, then we'll go to toiletries and... Clothes. I'm happy to just snorkel all day, so, um, but uh, I don't think I can walk around Alice Springs in the wetsuit, so I suppose I better coat packs and clothes. Anyhow, so, right, now, my life jacket. Now, people laugh at me, yeah? I am not a very strong swimmer. Um, oh, God, how are we going to get rid of it now? When we're, I went to some, my son was in the video yesterday, we took all the bed. He was a dive instructor in Koh Tao in Thailand for a bit, and I went to visit him. Now, I've always been very nervous of water. Um, uh, I had a bit of a, a, an incident in the sea when I was younger, and I think that just put the fear in me. And that's, I've never been a very strong swimmer. When I was in my 30s, I did go and learn to swim. And I went with, I was like, a, like a psychologist as well, so she taught me more not to be scared to get water in my face and... You know, and that you know, you're not going to drown if you, your head goes in the water. She was really good, and she'd teach me to swim. I mean, only breaststroke. I can't do all this stuff, but uh, you know, I can, I, you know, I can kind of swim now. And um, when I went to Kotal, my son said, "I'm going to teach you to snorkel." And I've always been terrified of snorkeling. I, uh, I didn't like having the thing in my mouth. I thought that you weren't breathing, having your face down. Everything. He was very patient with me. And he, he taught me in the pool, and then um, he went out on the boat with uh, his, the people he was working with. So there was a lot of people going there to dive, but he was just taking me to snorkel. I had to get down the steps off this boat, and God, I had a panic attack. Um, and I had a life jacket on, because as Dan said to me at the time, he said, you wear a life jacket. If you have to wear a life jacket to snorkel, it's nobody's business. Just do whatever it makes you feel comfortable so you can go out and enjoy yourself. And... Um, that's what I do. That's what I have a life jacket to do. 
And um, but back to the story. <clears throat> I, I got off this, got, got down these steps. I started having a panic attack. Um, like I was, I was just, I don't know what's wrong with me. And then like Dan was like, "Are oh, you all right, Mum? Are you all right?" So I said to him, "Like Dan, just go over there and just give me a minute, just, just a minute." And I was hanging onto this ladder. I was like talk, having a word with myself, saying, stop it, you're embarrassing him in front of his friends. Just let go of the ladder. You've got a life jacket on. You'll be fine. You'll be dead. <clears throat> and I eventually let go of the ladder. And I went snorkeling. And within five minutes, I was surrounded by all these fish and they were like following me. And I'm thinking it was absolutely magical. And, you know, I thought at that time, why have I not been doing this all these years? I was like mid-40s mid to late 40s when I did it and I was like oh I've missed out on so much now you can't get me out of the water I've, I've always got my snorkel with me and my life jacket and I'll get in any water and have a good old look around and I absolutely love it if you've never snorkeled give it a go it's absolutely amazing now my son keeps saying I've got to learn to dive well that's another story I did try um I'll tell you that one another day that was that was that was some experience anyhow so, so when I got back from Kotel, I bought my own life jacket because sometimes when you get on the boat, they're more like lifesaver jackets and they, like the big round the neck, so they tend to push you back. I mean, that's what they're there for. They're life-saving jackets and they push you back. And I just cannot get on with them because I'm trying to lean forward and they're trying to pull me back. So I bought my own that is fits me, is comfy, I trust it, and I take it everywhere with me. Now, I know I'm not going to be able to take it with me when I go travelling, um, but for now, it's coming. Um, I'm not going to be able to get life jackets when I'm on a remote beach somewhere, am I? So, but having said that, last, well, earlier this year when I was in Antigua, um, I, was, I was like, well, actually, I'd, I had a hangover. Um, because I hadn't gone, I got out of my phone, we only had three runs. I had the worst hangover ever. Oh, it put me right off rum. And I do like rum. But anyhow, um, and we it was her last day, so I thought, oh, I've got to get up. I mean, I really didn't want to. And I got up and um, went to the beach, and I thought, I'll get in the water. Surely that meant me feel better. So I just went in for a paddle, and I was just like feeling so, Ugh. I realised I was floating. And I think this is one of the things when you have a fear of water, is you don't believe your float. And I was like, oh, I'm floating. Is that the alcohol? So the next day I tried it again. I thought, oh, I'm still floating. So then I started trying snorkeling without my life jacket. Not going too deep uh, to start with. And um, I was like, oh, I do float. You don't actually have to make much effort. I couldn't wait to phone my son Dan and say, Dan, I went snorkeling without life jacket. And you know what he said? Yeah, it's time to do your dive master course. I'm like, oh, blimey. Oh, blimey, blimey. Oh, oh. Oh, right, so life check it. Let's cross that off the list. Um, oh, the the spark. No, no, I'll put the sponge float in later afterwards. Cause I don't know, right, I, I've obviously packed some clothes, but I have no idea what I've packed. So I'm going to come back to all those. I'm just going to get my stuff in here now. My fins, my fins. I do have fins as well. I haven't been able to take these in there. Oh, they're blooming good ones, and um, they're quite big. I know for my little feet. But they are fast. Um, I went snorkeling with my brother and I had mine on. He had these silly little ones on. I think he's still taking these silly little ones. And uh, I was going, let's go out further. Let's go and look for sharks. Oh, he's so scared of sharks. And uh, I was going and he, he was like, oh, well, hang on. I can't keep up. They're super fast. So I said to him, oh, I'm taking these to Australia. So, so when those sharks come, I'll be getting away faster than you. <laughs> I say it to wind them up because every day he's scared of them. Yeah, make sure I've got my dive socks in here. I um I know you're supposed to wear your fins with bare feet. I I can't, it hurts, so I wear my dive socks with them. You know what? I can't care if you keep the feet. I just do what makes me comfortable. It keeps me safe. It makes me happy. So they can fit nicely down the side. Pulls a bit of a, this bag is actually massive. God, for me, my brother can't get all our stuff in these two bags, then uh, you're definitely taking too much. Uh, right, so that's my fins. Uh, wetsuit. Right, I had to go and buy this the other day because I was going to borrow one of my sons, but then I was a little bit worried so if I damage it because um, if you're like 
if we're going in the sea and we're running low on water on the van, and you know, we might not, I know we should rinse them every time, but say that doesn't happen and I ruined my son's really expensive wetsuit. So I went and brought this cheap from um, Sports Direct. Um, it's got a little mark on it, so they did knock me some off. I paid 35 for it. But then if it gets ruined, I'm not going to be so worried. Uh -huh. I'm not even going to show you how I tried this on because the changing rooms are closed. So I had to do it over my clothes in the middle of the shop. Not that that bothers me, as you know, I try bars on in the shop over my clothes. Um, God. Honestly, you feel like a sausage in the skin, don't you? The, the most awful things to get on. Um, but, uh, you know, if I, if I ruin it, I'm not going to be like thinking, oh my God, it was a 200 pound wetsuit. I only knew, I didn't even know Sports Direct sold them. I only knew because my brother went and got hit from there and I thought, oh, I'll have a look. So I did. And uh, so it'll do the trick. Now, why, you're wondering, why am I taking the wetsuit to Australia? Isn't Australia supposed to be hot? No, we're going in winter, aren't we? So what does it say? The Perth from Milan. Um, is it, is it like, I mean, it's not like freezing, but uh, Perth is currently 20, to, 20 degrees 14. It'll get hotter as we go further up north. And then when we're down south from like Adelaide and then to Albany, it's quite cold. Um, Albany is quite cold. Well, not cold, 18. It's not cold, is it? But I don't know if the water's going to be too cold. So I'd rather have one just in case. I don't want to be missing out. And also, uh, when we're going to go swimming with humpback whales. How exciting is that? I mean, it's just one of the many exciting things we're doing. And um, where we're camping is actually near the boat ramp. And I didn't really want to drive an hour to their shop and back. So um, the fact we've got our own wetsuits and fins and snorkels means that we can meet them there and it's going to cut two hours off our like, travel time in the morning and then we can get back in the evening uh, for dinner. So, that's, we'll cross it off, does not I get myself all in a tizzle. Yeah, wetsuit socks are in there. Um, oh, gosh, where's that gone? Right. I'll put this in there. This is good. So sometimes like when you like you get like if we're going to the gorges and things, I don't want to take the life jacket with me, but I can tuck this into my brother's rucksack. He doesn't know that yet. I'll tuck that on him somehow. And uh I feel quite safe with this then. So no, see what I I don't know if you can see it, so I'm like I put it in like that and it helps to hold the bag out a bit. So because I put all the padding in the bottom, my brother can then put his fishing rods in here and they should be safe. Oh, God. well, as if we don't. Right, my waterproof bag, which I bought in Antigua. So this is so that this, it's like a, it's quite good at it. It's one of these waterproof ones. You put all your stuff in it and then you wrap it and do it up. And so your stuff stays waterproof in it. Now, not, well, there's not a lot of things I'm that worried about, but my cameras, I, I am, my drone, I don't want them. Oh, I wrapped it the wrong way now, to be fair. Um, I don't want them to obviously get wet. Um, I'm talking about my big Canon camera, like my others are waterproof, most of them are waterproof, so that's going to be an issue, so you can go in the bottom there. No. Where's that on the list? Should I put my glasses on? Uh, where is it? Oh, well, that's a good start, isn't it? Yeah, this one tastes like good. I do my lists. Well, I know it's on there somewhere. When I do these lists, I uh, I try and like section them. So I have like my swim stuff hats and stuff, then my clothes, and then I put my medicines I need together, toiletries, and then like shoes and things. And then at the bottom I have like all the cameras and my passport and my visas. Oh, that, oh that's that's crazy. Where are they? Oh well it's in the um hiking boots can go in next. Where did I put those? 
I just had one. I swear I just had one too. Hmm. Right. Hang on a minute. Right. I've got my hiking boots. Um, right. I need a bag to put them in. So I'm taking my hiking boots because um, I do wear trainers that have uh, ankle support. But we are going to be walking over some tough terrain some days. And uh, I really, I really don't want my ankles to, to be hurt. This is the thing. It's such a full-on itinerary. We've got so much to do and everything. I just don't want to put myself in a position where I hurt myself. And then I won't be able to enjoy things now. You might wonder why I'm putting my hiking boots in bags. I always put, like, well, they're a little bit dirty, actually. They've still got a bit of gorilla poop on them from Uganda. I have cleaned them, but um, I don't think they're ideally clean, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Um, I'll just leave them in a the bag. Yeah, when, yes, that was when I went to yeah, Uganda. I mean, I went to Uganda on a group tour two or three years ago now. And you go there, don't you, because you want to go and see the mountain gorillas, um, which I, is an awesome experience. It really is. I mean, it's a very expensive experience, but it's, it is awesome. Um, but actually, Uganda is a wonderful country, and there's so much to see, which you don't really think about. Um, it was, no, it's a great, great, great place. Um, and, I had, and that was when I bought the hiking boots. And, uh, yeah, they got, they got muddy, gorilla poop. Elephant poop, oh my God. Um, if you ever do go and you have to climb that mountain, I mean, they give you a guide. Thank goodness, it's like this to get up there. It's so steep and it's hot. It's sweltering hot and you have to wear long trousers, of course, and cover your arm, um, wear a hat. Oh, it's sweltering. And um, I really struggled to get up some of these these steep bits and I had my porter pulling me. I had another one pushing my my bottom up. I was like, oh, don't worry, just get me up this hill. And I'll tell you, he dragged me up that hill. He was excellent. And he, I swear to God, he was this tiny little fella. And, you know, like half my weight. How he did it, I don't know. But he was marvellous. I had to tip him quite a lot. A snorkel. So that's my goggles. And this is my snorkel. So I put that in there because it keeps say can't forget the snorkel but I've got so much stuff lying around here right um right towels so I'm not taking big towels um I think the truck provides with like shower towels and beach towels but I'm just taking a uh, I'm taking just a small one of these microcos that I feel like oh the sweat off but I've got a couple of bigger ones I think this is a bigger one I don't know it's a small one I've got a big one here oh I'm gonna sneeze um that I can just in case I need it for the beach pop those in there now it says on my list a hat and scarf I'll do that with the clothes I think that scarf might be in there actually so I am taking a woolly hat and my this woolly hat, I made this myself when I was bored in COVID lockdown. I made all me and all my friends a hat like this. It's very warm. Um, I'm taking that because I don't imagine it's going to be very warm at night and it's not going to be very warm down the south, especially at night. And don't forget, we'll be sleeping by the sea in a, thing, in a, a van. It'll be cold. And I'm just going to take these gloves just to, uh, if I need them. Um, I love these. I brought these in Peru. They're so funky. And I can still do things with them. Don't I just don't you hate gloves when you can't do anything because they've got fingers on them. I'll put those with the clothes for now. Oh now you remember these. My beach shoes. Them in a hole. Um oh gosh. Oh, I've nearly done all the main stuff. It's all going down to the little things now. Um, now, um, 
gosh, you're probably going to think, how, looking at how I'm packing now, how is this woman ever going to be able to pack with one hand luggage when she goes full time? <laughs> the problem is Singapore Airlines have given me my luggage allowance. You couldn't get a ticket without luggage now, so you end up using it, don't you? Um, otherwise, I'd be going through in my, my uh, I'd be wearing my um, life jacket and the uh, wetsuit to get there. This, so the van has a water tank, it has a shower, cold water only. Now, I don't mind a cold shower when you're hot. Like today, I'd have a cold shower because it's been really warm and, and sticky. But if it's cold, I don't want a cold shower. So this is actually out of my van. Um, it's like a like a portable shower thing, and you put one, you charge it with USB, and then it has like a little pump on it, and then it pumps the water up to the shower head. And it's really good actually. So I just need to get a bucket when I get to Australia from the supermarket or something. And I can fill it with cold water and then some hot water out of the kettle and I can have a warm shower. Now I know that sounds really thing. My, my brother says he's having a, a cold one. I said good. I don't care. I'm not. So we shove that in there. And then what have I got down here? Oh yes. And uh, I have to take this out of my van so I can plug this in the cigarette lighter thing. I don't know if they call them that anymore. And it has a, a plug on the end. Because my laptops all need a plug. So you, you plug this in to the cigarette lighter thing, plug on, and it converts it so you can charge your laptops. Obviously, um, like cameras and phones, you can just use the USB socket, but I can't do that for my laptop. So I have to take this just in case, otherwise it won't be able to work. And now that I've said that, I am sure somewhere I had an adapter so I could charge lots of USBs together. My goodness knows where that is. Oh, God. My hiking poles, in case I need them. I'm beginning to think we're going to fill these two big bags. Oh, dearie, dearie. Um, oh, dear. My, oh, oh, there it is. Ah, oh, I put it on the end of my speaker. Yes, I'm taking my speaker. So when we're camping out, we can have a bit of music. Oh, really? I'm taking everything but the kitchen sink, aren't I? Uh, two, two months in the outback with my brother. I'm going to need to listen to some good music. That's for sure. For sure. This is quite nifty as well. I got this in, um, well, Tesco, obviously. Right, and then you just like, you put your bottles in it and you can just carry them around like this. I thought these are so super nifty. I love it. It makes life so much easier because like, do, do you find, it's not so bad when it's like two of us, me and my brother, and we've both got a backpack because you can say, oh, can you get my water out of my back and I can get the water out of his back. But if you're like walking around on your own and you have to take your backpack out to get your water, it's a pain in the neck. So I'm going to shove that in there. Just you never know. Oh, mosquito bands. Going to need them. Definitely going to need them. I don't need those water shoes now because I've got those other ones. Um. I've got loads of mosquito bands. I think I've been, I, I found them in the cupboard. They're all still like, within the date. Not whatever date, you know. It's not your eat by date, is it? Or whatever it is. And then we've got binoculars. Only a, it's only a little pair. Um, but um, they're quite good, actually. When I was in Antigua, we were doing this. When my, my brother did come to Antigua the first time I went and joined me for a few weeks. And uh, we would use these to uh, spy into the yachts and see what all the rich people were doing. Mm. That makes me sound creepy. <laughs> but uh, it's quite interesting. <laughs> Let's put that in there. And then um, I've got a couple of torches. 
and I did get some spare batteries just for night. Those in there, and um, oh, I need those USBs for this. And then I got a couple of head torches. I don't know how these work yet. For when we're in the caves, so I can spot the crocodiles if I get spot. And that might be better putting these little things in a bag together so I don't lose them all. Oh, God, I've got to find the bag. Um, yes, I'm taking my gym gloves because if I have to go climbing through gorges, I'm not cutting my hands up and I want a good grip. Also, um, well, if I'm brave enough, I'm going to try and climb all of those fire watch trees. You know in Australia they have those tall trees and they have those metal spikes sticking out of them and you can climb all the way up to the top to platforms where they used to look out for fires and things. Um, now, I said that now, what if I'd be brave to because I'm absolutely terrified of heights. Um, well, I don't mind heights but I have a fear of falling. Um, so yeah, we say that, we'll see. Um, I have a couple of these take um right you're supposed to be able to like put your phone in them so if you're like in the water snorkeling or swimming you put your phone in it and put it around your neck to keep it safe and also to have energy to take pictures for it now i've never put my phone in these i don't know if i trust them um but what they are very good for and what i've used them for is if you're swimming and you want to and you haven't got a pocket in your swimwear to put your keys. You can just stick them in here and tuck them into your know, wetsuit. In my case, I stick them down my life jacket and you know, I know my keys are safe. When I've forgotten them, I've had to put them in my socks. And that is not comfy. Not comfy. All right. I need a bag with those in so we don't lose them all. one will do. Just to keep them all together. Otherwise there's going to be loads of loose things just lying around the bottom of my case. Now you may notice we're putting the heavy things in one bag um, because this is the one with the wheels um, and then um, just in case we're not taking that one but I'm pretty sure when I get to my brother's we'll end up emptying all of it and starting a new um, I, oh, I, oh, I found an, oh, I have found a big can of excitement. Um, oh, right. This seems a bit odd. I'm going to take the compass. Because when I was at my aunt and uncle's, my uncle and cousin were saying to me, oh, if you get lost, you need a compass. So just to keep them happy, I'm going to take the blooming compass. Um, mad. Crazy. Mad, mad, mad. Um, who have we got to? Yeah, I've got all those toiletries to go in, clothes. And these need to go in. And these are my, some of my medications. Don't forget we're going for so long. We have to make sure we've got enough of everything. That's toiletries, so we'll sort that out. Well, toiletries to sort out. Oh, there's to go in there. Um, okay, so, oh, I've got my hats. Don't forget my hats. I'll put these in at the end because I can put something in. So I've got this hat. Look, in case it's windy. I look so touristy. And then I have this hat. If I want to look cute. It's a bit out of shape. Anyway, we're getting there. Oh gosh, and this, can't forget this. Oh gosh. So, you get a lot of flies in some parts of Australia, so yeah, I don't know how it works. So, I'll have a fly net. In case there's pests and flies in there. Isn't I brought my brother one for Christmas, so he's got one as well. <laughs> but I think that's all the big stuff to go in. 
Now, yes, now I've just got to sort my toiletries and my clothes. I'm not taking many clothes. I'm going to, you know, wash, well, hand wash if we have to, but they do have washing machines on the campsite. And to be honest, I'm going to use some of the swimming shorts to wear just all the time. So if I get in the water, that I'm ready and I'm going to get out. And a few tops. I don't think I need to take that much. I'm thinking seven to ten tops at the most. A uh, couple of night dresses. Um, a couple of long trousers. Maybe even one. I don't need to take much. Not much on there. And then just my toiletries, like my toothbrushes. We're not taking uh, shampoos and conditioners and things like that because we'll buy it all there. It's just pointless. And then it's just make sure I've got all my medication and uh, seasick tablets so that and then oh I need to put my flip flops in there at the end as well I think I'm nearly there gosh it pays to have a list and the only other thing I've got to do is pack my cameras and um, I have more or less done that so yeah pretty good shape I brought myself a small notepad so that I can I keep a diary of the days and keep an eye on how much we're spending and you know, so I can make notes all day. I have my itinerary folder downstairs. It's actually a Lee Rach folder and it's got in there all our campsite bookings, all our tour bookings and um, Maps of how to get places, yeah, you know, and a few like tourist information things for some of the pubs. Mm, too organized, I think. Anyway, I've waffled on enough. Uh, it's exciting, isn't it? So, um, yeah. oh, so tomorrow I will be so I shall finish this tonight, tomorrow morning, then tomorrow. I shall be going to my brother's just after lunch to uh, probably empty the bag and start again because he's just useless, he really is. Um, when we, he left me in Antigua, he, he calls me and says, oh, I can't get anything in my case. I go there and he had three pairs of shorts and two pairs of trainers and he said it was full. So, oh, dear Lord, I can't pack the toffee. So no doubt I'll have to pack his stuff up for him. So we'll get that done in the afternoon and then we'll be having an early night, leaving at four I think in the morning. We're going to get the five to six bus from uh, Oxford to get to Heathrow and then our flight's at 9.30. I cannot believe it's happening. And I will be, so I will try and film as much as I can for you but I'm not going to have great Wi-Fi in a lot of places, so I might not be able to post quite regularly, and you might end up getting seven videos all in one go. But I will share my journey with you, and I'll show you what all the things I get to see. And it's going to be so, so exciting. I absolutely can't wait. Four years in the planning. Mm. This is a dream. A dream, a dream, a dream. I can't believe it's happening. Anyway, thanks for watching. Let me finish off the rest of this. As I'll be here all night, won't I? Um, I'll see you all on the way to Australia. Ciao, ciao!